Monday from Chicago. This is Bruce Dumont with our Beyond the Beltway analysis of national politics, featuring occasional injection of rumor and innuendo, all for the fire panel of political insiders, pundits, power brokers, public servants, professors, and most importantly, plain speaking Americans from coast to coast. Tonight, featuring commentary by Democrat Michael Bauer, Democrat Michael Carbonaggi, Republican Jeff Holm, and Republican Mike Miller. Our program tonight coming to you from our old base at the Museum of Broadcast Communications in Chicago, where our toll-free lines are open at 1-800-723-8289. That's 1-800-723-8289. If you'd like to email me a comment, it's Bruce Dumont at museum.tv. If you want to tweet me a comment, it's at Dumo, at D-U-M-O. And, of course, you can join us on the World Wide Web at beyondthebeltway.com and also live on Facebook, the Beyond the Beltway with Bruce Dumont Facebook page. And, again, uh, also uh, keep in mind that wherever you're listening, we really want your participation this evening. Another, we got another great full two hours of discussion. In the second hour, we're going to be joined uh, by Sheriff uh, Mark uh, Napier. He is the Sheriff of uh, Pima County, Arizona, and he is going to give us a first-person, up-close and personal assessment of the border as he sees it as a professional law enforcement uh, uh, agent in that part of the country. Uh, but uh, let's, let's begin. Uh, there's so many, I don't even know where to begin. But I'm going to start with you, Michael, because I know you've got opinions. Okay. The president uh, yesterday came up with a plan that he hoped that would end the government shutdown. Yes. And he wanted to make a case for his wall, his protections. He didn't call it a wall. He, he, he elaborated that it could be slat steel fencing and a lot of other stuff. And he also, he talked about uh, the DACA kids. Yes. Or the DACA population, giving them a three-year temporary uh, you know, protection from the government. So my question to you is, because a couple of week, a couple of months ago on this program, you and I cut a deal. You and I, we cut a deal, and right. we said the wall for the DACA kids. So they didn't come. They didn't go all the way because this is temporary. Right. But uh, the Democrats said it's a non-starter. Is right. it in your view? Well, let me start first with what I like very quickly yeah. about what the president proposed. He proposed 805 million dollars for drug detection at ports of entry on the southern border. Now, 90% of the illegal drugs are estimated to come into the United States through ports of entry from Mexico. Yep. And of the, all the vehicles coming in through ports of entry, less than 20% are inspected. So having a great deal more inspection te technology to inspect these vehicles is, a, is, is well needed and much overdue. Secondly, he proposed funding an additional 2,750 uh, Customs and Border Patrol agents Wonderful. We need more agents on the border. He also proposed funding 75 new immigration judges to try to cut down on the backlog for adjudication of political asylum claims. He also proposed $800 million for humanitarian assistance. All great stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, let's deal with what he did wrong. Okay. All right. He suggested... So, every, so, every, so everything that he gave to the Democrats, you liked. <laughs> but now we're going to get into the things that you don't like which are the things he wanted in return. I'm talking about what needs to be negotiated. Okay. That, that, so first of all, he proposed uh, for the seven to 800 million uh, persons covered by DACA that they would get three-year temporary residency in the United States. Let's understand something, and even the news channels got some of this wrong. There are an estimated 1.9 million dreamers. Dreamers are kids who were brought to this country at the age of 16 or younger by their parents and, and they're considered dreamers because they didn't do this voluntarily. They were brought by their parents. Right. And, and of the DACA program that Obama established by executive order, about 700,000 of those 1.9 million dreamers registered. Okay. So that leaves another so, 1.2 uh, million dreamers. So I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get, get everybody else. I, I wanna get Jeff Hum, who's one of our card-carrying Republicans. I wanna get engaged, okay. everybody. Then we'll come back to your specifics. Okay. Go ahead. So two important, two important clarifications. The, the um, establishment of DACA was at the time the policy was created, right? So it's not just rolling 16 years, anybody who comes in 16 years. It's anybody who was 16 or younger as of 2008, right? Right. right? right. So that was 10 years ago right. already. Yes. Um, and most dreamers, I mean, this, this is the thing, is, is that um, dreamers are not kids <clears throat> anymore. They're, they're in their late 20s to early 30s, just like I am, right? Okay. And, and there has been a lot of time 
in that time since that policy is passed to to attempt right, to, before, to be, before we get too much into the weeds on the yep. specifics of this which i want to we got two hours to do it i want you to talk about the politics of it the, um, the, the president sure. he made he made this proposal yesterday and nancy pelosi shot it down even before he delivered the words uh, well and, and it's predictable right uh, they uh, both both Chuck and Nancy have said that they are not willing to give him the wall under any circumstances. This is incredibly favorable conditions that you would not get under any other Republican, and it just shows that the Democrats want to keep immigration as a wedge issue. Michael Carbonaggi also joins us. Nice to have you with us, also a Democrat. What's your reaction to the president's thought and what he's doing now with Jared Kushner? They believe that they can go and they can talk to individual rank-and-file Democrats in the House and pick them off and get them to turn against their leadership. How real, in, in districts that have been won by Donald Trump? Open the government, and then we talk. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's, Why? That's give us, give us what we want, Why? and then Why? maybe it's talk. It's because, because right now, but Donald Trump's engaged in hostage taking, oh, and, it, and if, he gets, if he gets this, Mike, call it what it is, if he gets this, why do we not believe he's not going to do this again the next time he gets Here's something? Here's my question. That Rush Limbaugh calls him and says, there's 30 members of the Freedom Caucus. Mm. They're determining what happens with the, con with the country right now. Give us what we want or the government stays shut down. All right. Here's my question to you. The Democrats, over the last 25, 30 years, they've been in charge of government or, or levers of government for a number of years with, with absolute power in some cases. Why did they not do anything to solve the immigration crisis when they had all the marbles. So, but, but the government was not shut down. It was operating, everybody on full pistons. And you know what? Nothing got solved. Uh, so I'm happy. We, we so if a, somebody the, says, yeah. hey, you, you did it when you were focusing all your attention. You had the opportunity, and you blew it. So, so there was a bipartisan solution, a bipartisan immigration reform solution that, that Lindsey Graham and Dick Durbin worked on, and that's really when we talk about DACA. That's where we got to. Right. There, there, there was a solution that it <clears> said, listen, and this is what's so heart-rendering, is that these young people were told, come out of the shadows and register with the government. You've been in the shadows right now. You've been living in fear of deportation to a country that you don't know. Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico, you came over here as a baby. That's not your, your country you're associated only with. Seven, oh, let's say, with Obama as the president, with the words being articulated by Barack Obama, right. only 700,000 of the 1.2 million, or whatever the high number is, only 700,000 believed Barack Obama. And what the president is saying now right. is, I want to take the 700,000 that cared enough to come out of the shadows and sign up I'm going to focus on them. I'm not going to focus on the others that never came out of the shadows. Because they were too What's afraid wrong? to come out of the shadows. Why? When Barack Obama was president? Because they were scared. Because, was Barack Obama, because, was he going to round them up and, and, and deport them? No, Barack Obama wasn't, but you know, the, there's a pendulum, a political pendulum, and if the pendulum shifts, you know, people feared we would have exactly what we have right now. When we, when we come back, I got to, Mike, give me, give me 15 seconds right now on, on your response. I, why would they, why would... Are you, does a strike make sense? When, when you have a strike and the union walks out, Open then they say, the I'll government. tell you what, let's give up the strike and then we'll negotiate. No, you don't do that. Open the, the Democrats will this walk is how, away. This is how you negotiate in a democracy. That's not how you But the Democrats this aren't negotiating. They're just walking away. The proof of what happened this the, weekend the, This is, government shut down. When we come back, 1-800-723-8289, your response to the government shutdown. Do you care? Are you affected at all? Back shortly. When you find out that they are real, that all changes, you see. Vampirism is deadly contagious. Goodman Theatre presents Conor McPherson's St. Nicholas, starring Brendan Coyle from Downton Abbey and Mary Queen of Scots, straight from London's Donmar Warehouse in a performance critics call Spellbinding. Stellar and a vicious delight. For a limited time only at Goodman Theatre, you might just have a wicked good time. Live from Chicago, it's Saturday Night Live, the experience. For the first time ever, get an inside look at the making of SNL. Over 500 artifacts direct from the show. Be a part of Wayne's World, Weekend Update, and so much more. Experience all it takes to put the show together. Now at the Museum of Broadcast Communications at 360 North State Street in Chicago. For tickets, visit museum.tv. 
A line is a powerful thing. It connects the global economy to your living room, cleaner air to stronger markets, factory floors to less crowded roads. Today's progress to tomorrow's promise. Norfolk Southern. One line, infinite possibilities. Chicago, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Um, Here, if you were, or I'm going to ask our Democrats. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to ask Mike first. I wanna, I, we have a lot of mics I tonight. I want to ask Michael Carbonaggi. <laughs> right. Yeah, Go what's ahead. the mic? Come on. No, that's, the other, that's the other right. mic. Yeah. yeah. But I, that's right. We have three mics, yeah. and, and we have a, right. our Michael. Go ahead. I made a comment before the show that I thought this was a wonderful week for, for Mr. Trump. Okay. And you had a funny reaction. Yes. And I'm going to read this very quickly. Tulsi Gabbard, okay. proof that you, the Democrats are going to eat their own. BuzzFeed. All he has to do is oh, say man. BuzzFeed, okay. Okay. and we know okay. that there's a lie. Okay. The whole border issue, we can neg the women's march, yes. undermining everything about the left. Uh, uh, Ocasio Cortez, feelings are more important than facts. Right. If you want, what is a socialist? This is what a socialist is. The State of the Union, the fact that she would use that that the leader <laughs> of the House would say to the President of the United States, "We don't want you to come there." I hope to heck he takes up North Carolina or somebody and presents it to the Ooh, people. Yeah. I, I, I think I, I think she's for those of you listening on the radio. For those of you listening on the radio, you can't see Mike clutching his pearls right now because Donald Trump's going to have to give <laughs> this oh from the God. White and House. One more, one, one, one more. I have, and it is clear <laughs> that the Dems <coughs> are moving further and further left. Absolutely. Okay, that's been that's been clear. Wonderful thing. That's been clear with the problem with your theory is so Trump comes up with a proposal yesterday and it was a wonderful proposal. Absolutely. Do you think that Mike Lee from Utah, the Jim Langford from no, Oklahoma, some, right. and Tom Cotton from Arkansas are going to vote for Trump's proposal if it comes to the Senate for a vote? He will They're call absolutely them. not. I it's not going to give Republican support. And he will give them something and he will get so, their votes. So two Back years, Carbonaggi. So to, to Mike, to your response, two years ago today, Donald Trump swore an <coughs> oath to preserve and protect the Constitution. Okay, where are we going with this? Yeah. He shut the government down. Okay, so what's have to do He's with that, What? What I'm saying is that in two years, he's had a chance to show that he's a person who keeps his word and he has integrity, and now he's saying, trust me. So what I'm saying is open the government, and then we'll continue I to have a discussion. Of, of all the arguments against yeah. the shutdown, that's probably the worst one I've ever heard. Not, yeah, open the heard government, and then we're going to have a discussion you about the, immigration and the infrastructure fact and other that the issues. The Democrats won't even begin to – I thought his speech yesterday – was wonderful. Again, I didn't vote for the guy. You I thought, thought it was his, wonderful. Well, it was wonderful in terms of DACA and 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 the money for the border. All those things that you. Wait, wait, if Mike, you're a DACA person, if, you want if, to be you. If, if you Pelosi is going to reject that, offer him permanent that, residency. <coughs> what are the chances but, she will Mike, accept Mike, anything Mike, if the will you, government's will you reopened? That this She's is not going to accept anything. But but if so, you, okay, I'm sorry. Go on. Two, go two things, right? Let's be clear, right? Um, pending a um, unconstitutional <coughs> injunction, uh, none of the DACA recipients have any protected status. This actually gets them out of legal limbo and puts them in protected status while the while For three years. while Congress can come up with right. with further time. Right now they have no protected status right. and if not for a universal injunction from I think it's New York yes. which which is overstepping the bounds of that jurisdiction, <coughs> they would have no legal status at all. Here's uh, my assuming point. the president mind, what is assuming just, Obama's just a minute. order you is criticized Michael Bauer. Okay, you said there were parts of this a proposal that the president uh, delivered yesterday that, that you agreed with. Yes. My question is this. The president has put it on the record, okay? Yes. He knows what he wants. What he wants is going to the, to the Senate. It's going to the Senate this week. Yes. Mitch McConnell yep. has promised that there's going to be a debate on it. My question is, where is the Democratic proposal? Where is the proposal from Nancy right. Pelosi where she calls a press conference with Chuck Schumer and says, here's what we want. Here are the five bullet points that we want. Where's that? Wait a minute. Where, Trump, just for, forget, I'm asking Michael Carbonaggi. Okay. Where are the Sorry. five bullet points so that if I'm a voter, I can look at what President Trump wants and I can look at what the Democrats want and I can say, okay, I'm going to call my congressman and I'm going to tell him to do one of two things. Where is the piece of paper that says what the hell the Democrats want? They got everything they want. No, no, no. 
open Michael, the, and I and I know it sounds like a broken record, but it's it does. the truth. Open the government. But that's we can a, have a discussion but, but about a immigration but that's policy. A, but that's a non-starter. Because right now this is because, hostage because, taking. Because you know what that means but. to me? That means to me that the Democratic leadership in Congress, they haven't thought one second right. about they what they have not thought one second about solving a problem that's been a national problem, whether it's a crisis or not, for 30 years. They haven't Bruce, given one th there is a, thought there, there to was it. A, there was the a only thought they want to give There was a bipartisan solution <clears> that Donald <throat> Trump personally tanked. I give Lindsey Graham some credit. He has worked his side of the aisle. Then why don't, they why don't they re why don't they reintroduce it? Because right now it's hostage shaking while the government is shut down. Open the government and we'll say you want to not shut down. So so the reality and by the way, and just before real quick well, and, say and like two thirds this, of by the way, government just to be really clear, down. the Republicans shut this down in December for uh, before Nancy Pelosi got sworn in. This was a, a Republican shutdown that happened when, when McConnell wouldn't pass this in the Senate. Leader, so, so, so for, uh, we're for talking, everybody we're to step back and say I or I agree that was a political move. I'm saying right now it's been 20 days since right they got now, inaugurated. Right now, Chuck Schumer or Nancy Pelosi could call a press conference and say what their plan is. Now, everybody already knows, well, we want to get the government back together again. Forget that. Let's say that's a non-starter. So that the American people can look at, here's the president's plan, here's the Democratic plan. Yep. And are there things that are on this plan that are on this plan? Yeah, I think there probably is. Okay, Bruce. So as you know... I tend to see a lot of things through a political lens. You do. So let's look at the political lens as of today, January 20th, a day after the president <coughs> made his proposal on, uh, um, to the nation. Right. The Democratic Party is unified on the concept that we want the government open before we will negotiate. The Republican Party is now badly split. I assure you the Freedom Caucus of the House will not support what Trump said yesterday. I, you know, Ann Coulter has ripped him to shreds. So? It, you know, well, he is someone with who, the she is the queen the regent in this. And, and in Coulter this has gone back and forth on whether she likes Trump or hates yeah, Trump. She, on she hates given him day. now. Yeah, but this, she, this she, but you know what she said? She said we have Jeb Bush now. She yeah. is a minor, in my view, she is a minor figure in this country. I would agree. She's a minor figure. So uh, let me see what Mitch now, McConnell could do with his caucus and getting uh, votes for this proposal. Ain't going to happen. You know, his but, caucus I mean, ain't going to vote for but this. You, but, you, but you said that the American people, they want the government open to get. Yes. Okay. Well, what's being done to do that? What, how are they acting on that? And how do you know that every Democrat wants the government open again? Maybe they don't. I think every Democrat every does. Democrat the, House passed, the, the House passed do you appropriations want the government, bills. Do you want the government open again, Mike? I, I want border security. <clears throat> and it'll open after that. It's the, it's the only thing he has to negotiate with. So, so, so pay, I'm, so pay the guy who's got the hot, the gun in your head. Is that what you're saying here? Pay the guy. It's not a. Is that what you think about a strike? That, For heaven's sake! How, it how is, is this? You're calling I, this a strike? I, who's on strike? No, who's I, the employer and the no, employee in this I'm relationship? It's a tool. It's a <coughs> tool I just got back. Actually, it's more. It's more. It's more a tool lockout. used by unions to get to the negotiating table. This is a tool used by the president to try to get the Democrats to come to the table. And and I'm not speaking for my my colleague here. Many of us on on the conservative side, we're perfectly fine with DACA. It's how it was implemented that was the problem. Congress yes. should have done well, this. Well, the so president had I no right but I to do what he you. did. But, but, None. To, but, but, to, but to Mike's point here about getting McConnell, the problem is, I think, and I can't speak for my friends on the conservative side, it comes dangerously close to the A word, amnesty. And the fear I have is that when you talk about a deal, <coughs> We've seen so many deals come and go with this president, and he do I don't know who's running White House Office of Legislative Affairs right now, but from what I understand, he got on TV right now without Mc yesterday without McConnell and his team even knowing he was going to go on TV. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what the deal is of three years, if it becomes one year, if it becomes five years, if Rush doesn't like it because it's too but close it's to become no years. But the fact that it was Democrats rejected, won't even talk. so let's do this. But it was let's rejected open out up of the hand. government, rejected and let's, let's open up the government as we do in a democracy, mistaken, and the legislation and we'll have here. It was rejected out of hand. So there is one gentlemen, we'll gentlemen, 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 wait a gentlemen, the president said, the president said in his tweet this morning, <laughs> listen, in his tweet this morning, he said that amnesty might be used yes. in the future yes. for a bigger deal. He's a now, deal maker. Right, but my point is, how many people listening to the program and how many people at this table like that idea? Is it? Don't you like that idea? Amnesty? I don't know what amnesty oh, but, is. But, you, you know what? I, if I he want, want, I just want he the is basically listen, saying, Bruce. "I'm going to make a bigger deal." 
Okay. When but I when I read that tweet, he you said, he "I'm going to make a bigger deal." He talks. Which, there's no talk behind. There's no action behind tweets, the talk. But it shows oh, you. There's no action behind his tweets. It shows you. It shows you how. Okay. It shows you respond. One at a time, the, folks. We're getting some calls because too many people are talking at the same time, okay. and okay. they're used to hearing okay. just me. <laughs> okay. it, uh. it shows you. It shows you just. It, you know, to your point that that this is the beginning position, not the final position. The fact that the Democrats rejected it out of hand shows you how one side has come to the table and the Democrats have not. We so have, it, passed, hold on, we hold have on. passed six, seven appropriations bills. Six we've passed for the entire year, and one we passed a continuing resolution in the House to fund continuing resolutions. Home, wait, Homeland Security for a month, for a month just to try to negotiate this stuff. Continuing what resolutions. Is wrong, what is wrong with opening the government and having <coughs> continuing resolution for Homeland Security Because keep it going for a month so we can get these issues ironed because out? Because continuing resolutions are what got us into this, this shutdown. The fact that the government is always funded by continuing resolutions makes the next shutdown just an inevitable political fight. It's been happening for five or six years. And, and Bruce, continuing I don't think, resolutions I think are a problem. Question out there. I need an answer. Do, do we want the Do we want the government open? Yes, I want federal employees to go back okay. to work. And I just want to say to them, I was a, before I had my current job, I was a federal prosecutor at the SEC for a number of years. And I know my, I've talked to my colleagues. They've been home for 30 days. Um, it doesn't affect you in your day-to-day -day life, but I'll tell you right now, they had investigations going with broker-dealer fraud, Ponzi schemes, yeah. all of this. Uber can't go forward with its IPO because it needs a sign-off from the SEC. But I want to say is, would any of us show up and work a day, a job for 30 days in a row without getting paid? I don't know. The studio might be kind of empty. Um, hats off to them for doing the job and not getting paid. And I want to give a shout-out, too, because before we came over here, I was at a fundraiser. Coast Guard station that serves uh, Navy Pier up to Highland Park. Uh, 25 active duty members there, three of whom who have uh, infants, eight of them who have newborns. They've been working for 30 days without a paycheck right now. Average age is 20 years old. And who do they blame? Um, I, I don't bring up politics to them for a minute, but I'd say Good. if you get a chance, go to the U.S. Coast Guard Mutual Assistance website, make a donation. It gives a cash grant and a low interest loan. You know, it's my understanding. Keep in mind, all of these workers who are not working now, are going they to are going entitled to be to paid pay. someday. Okay, so including, including, let me finish, including the non-essential government workers that have been out of work for 30 days. Why they're not essential and still getting paid, I don't know. Well, I'm just a taxpayer. Back shortly. Meet the Flintstones, they're the family. From the family. Meet George Jetson. His boy, Elroy. With instant acceleration, electric cars are more fun to drive and more affordable than ever. Electric cars are here. Plug in to the present. Honey, what's the best vacation we've ever had? Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, Longboat Key, real, authentic, Florida. Plan to visit online at BradentonGulfIslands.com. We're going to introduce our guests or have them introduce themselves, and we'll begin with Michael Bauer. Um, I have uh, been involved in a number of charitable and political activities for many decades. I currently serve as the co-chair of the State of Illinois Holocaust and Genocide Commission. I am the campaign chair for one of the mayoral candidates in Chicago. 
And uh, Michael, I want to ask a question. You yes. you were appointed by Governor Rauner to yes. your position. He is no longer the governor. He is no longer the. Are you likely, or would you like to be renominated to that commission? I by certainly the new governor? hope that uh, Governor Pritzker will reappoint me. And you've known him for a long time. I've known him for a long time. He came to my dad's funeral many years ago. Okay, um, Mike Miller. Good evening. I'm a uh, an economist by training, uh, University of Pittsburgh, 1980, and I am an associate professor of economics at DePaul where I do uh, a, what is called applied macro. We look at the real world of Fed policy and government policy. And my research is on, of all things, a tiny little country in the Middle East called Bahrain. OK, very good. If I ever have questions for it, I'll, I know what to call. You need to call me. Are they Michael Carbonaggi yeah, joins us. Fleet is based uh, exactly. Yeah. I, uh, thanks for having me on, Bruce. Uh, former aide to Senator Paul Simon, then an aide to Senator Dick Durbin. I used to be a federal prosecutor for a number of years at the SEC in Chicago. Um, currently, I'm a commissioner at the Cook County Board of Review, and I'm the Democratic State Central Committeeman uh, for the 9th Congressional District. When did you uh, work for Senator Simon? I worked for Paul from 1992 to 1996, and then I worked on Congressman Dick Durbin's race, and then when he won, helped set up the Chicago office, and then I went to law school. Okay. All right. And uh, Jeffrey... Michael Hell. <laughs> yes, part of the uh, unofficial part of the Michael Caucus Welcome. here tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm the uh, club development chair for the Young Republican National Federation. Uh, that is a, a nationwide organization of uh, Young Republican chapters. I actually used to be the president of the Chicago chapter for about four years. Um, but uh, my goal is to uh, grow the party out in uh, different places. Uh, why our chapters tend to be counties or very large cities. Uh, but Chicago and Atlanta, um, both blue cities, uh, happen to be two of the largest uh, YR chapters in the country, both about three to 350 members. Um, and then, you know, trying to grow out in different areas. All right, very good. Let's go to calls. Let's go to Kevin listening to us in Austin, Texas on KLBJ. Whoop, are oh. you there? Nope, it sounds like he's not. Let's go to Brian and Roselle listening to us on the Internet. Hi, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'm a union electrician. I have Democratic leanings, but I am no fan of Donald Trump. Uh, you were asking a lot of questions at the start of the show, Bruce, about what do the Democrats want. Uh, the Democrats want to lock down the Hispanic vote. And when you listen to all the promises they make, they'll say we're not for open borders, but yet Democrats will never say who they want to keep out of the country. And then one other quick comment. All three major parties to this debate – both parties, Republican and Democrat, plus the mainstream media, are both horrible on this issue because they always focus on the border when half the problem is yes. visa overstay. Right. Right. But we never talk about that. It's always the border, the border, the border. Right. Half of them fly into the country, overstay their visas, nobody says anything about it, and nobody puts any pressure on the employers. Mm -hmm. Let's hear about that part of the problem. Well, that's what I said a couple of weeks ago, and I've said for a couple of years on this program. Unless you support uh, E-Verify, e unless you're willing to go in and have some raids and, and lock up some employers and have them carted off to, to jail, uh, you're not serious about it. And I, you know, I'd, like, I'd like to see raids every night. But, but I think I, Brian, I'm sorry, I think Brian's making yeah. a very important point about people coming into airport right. ports of entry. <clears throat> this has been a problem for many, many years, Democrat and Republican administrations, and no one wants to tackle it. But his proposal yesterday, I believe part of the $805 million would go for something like that. No, no, no. It it's, would just, just not? It's, just, it's just for technical inspection of vehicles at uh, the southern border. I thought it was for, for well, uh, at, was, at points um, of entry. The number, the number I saw on one of those things is for points of entry. The, the number I saw on on yeah. enforcement I, when you gave the number earlier, I wasn't sure if it was included in <clears> this or not because I saw okay. it was 782 million yeah. was about new border agents and law enforcement. Yes. So that could include people at ports of entry, right? Because yeah. CBP operates ju at more than just the border. Okay. There is oh, no yeah. doubt that. His, his numbers are right in terms of where a lot of the illegal immigrants come from. However, there's a concept in economics which is called moral hazard. And a moral hazard is created when you pass something that will actually lead to people behaving poorly instead right. of properly. Yes. Right. So if you tell people in Honduras and other places that this border is now not going to be secure, we're not going to put up a wall, we're not going to make it harder for you, 
it is going to lead to many more people, not fewer people, yes. coming north. Yes. yes. And that is going to be the and, crisis. And it's a short of miles through the belief desert. that this is somehow okay. It is right. the moment you've set up that, that moral hazard, we're going to pay the long-term price. Mike, would, would you also acknowledge, because part of what the President also talked about under the humanitarian uh, yes, he did. Uh, uh, heading, he said that th he wants to have offices in Honduras and in Guatemala sure where citizens who want to come to the United States or seek asylum, they can go there and do the paperwork. Yes. Now, by doing that, does that not also encourage more people to come? Yes. Because it's easier. Well, yes, it is easier. So is and, that good and it, or it, bad? I, I'm not sure. I mean, because here's one problem is, I think many Americans believe <clears throat> that you are allowed to ask for asylum just because of where you live is terrible. And we know that's right. not true. You have to be somehow, uh, right. that there's a, a credible, threat. A credible threat. A credible threat. Yes. That's why yes. people from Cuba or whatever, they were allowed yes. to just come in. Yes. People think that we, we allow economic refugees to come to this country. Right. Right. That is not true. Correct. And, and it would be yeah. a disaster and, and if we super did. Important. And, and Mike, and that's a good point too, is, is, and I'm first generation. My dad came over from Italy and he followed a process at the time to, to migrate over here. This conversation a lot of times gets muddled because people separate, don't separate refugees from immigrants. Absolutely, and there's a difference. And, and, and it's a very different, yeah. and, and, and I will say right now, to Mike's <coughs> point too, about where the money is going in, we also need increased funding for immigration judges as well for those oh, folks. Sure. Which, which is part of the deal that Trump well, offered. But it's been a part of a lot of deals, and when we open up the government, we can work on a comprehensive immigration. <laughs> can I make another observation? You follow the process and you show up, Second, Brian. And, you, and you present at a yep. port of entry as, as a refugee. Yeah. That's the, the problem I have, Bruce, with your idea is go down to a local U.S. office in Honduras or El Salvador where, you know, they're, they're trying to recruit your 15-year-old son to join a gang and they're going to kill the family if you don't. You go, you go present your paperwork and then you go home to wait to see how the U.S. government can process the paperwork. That's very different than what many of these refugees but are doing, saying leave country and coming here because they can't stay in their town or village. And no, you're what, interesting, your ahead. story is very interesting because you say about your father. Yeah. Do you have no, no bad feelings that these people are jumping the line? Who's that your jumping? father who, went through it the right way. Who, who's all, jumping the line? All, as a Republican, all I've ever asked for is that people come through the front door, not through the back right, door. So, so, I would be but, willing but, to but, double but, legal but, immigration. But, 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 but Mike, here's my problem with that is, as Donald Trump changed refugee policy and reduced the number of immigration judges at ports of entry and created a problem. We did have a structure and an orderly process that worked until Donald oh, Trump came did. in. But no, but, has uh, been but a Mike, problem no, for decades. No, no, but Mike, I'm just, no, no, actually two years ago, Donald Trump changed the, pulled immigration judges off ports of entry. So now we have an enormous backlog of refugees. The very people that we can all agree and say, these people are in a nightmare situation and have to leave. These, well, some of these refugees are not refugees. Right. They are told on the way up, Correct. if you say the words, X, Y, and Z, you become a refugee. And if we had right. All they have and, to do is lie. Like if we had immigration other, judges <laughs> in a process. You know that people sometimes lie. We're going to go back to Brian in just a moment, but, but one other important number that uh, is, is, is referenced, and that's uh, the, the temporary, uh, the temporary protected workers. Protected status. Protected status. Temporary protected status. status. Protected yes. status. There's 300,000. That was the yes. number given by the president yesterday. Yes. Yes. And uh, these are people that, that want to come and work here because American industry needs them to come and work here. And earlier last week, before this all hit the fan, uh, the president gave an address to a group of farmers. And the biggest applause line in that was when he said, I want to help you bring people in because you need to have people work your fields. Right. They, th I think he thought initially that you know by by being tough on immigration, he somehow was going to get a big a big applause. He got the applause when he said, "I'm going to make it easier for you to come in and and, and work with people with TPS." So that seems to be. Uh, is there anybody on the Democratic side that would disagree with that? That sounds like a common sense. TPS was point. set up because, uh, and it covers six countries: El Salvador, Nicaragua, Haiti, the Sudan. Syria and Nepal, because either they had humanitarian crises or political crises so significant that the United States decided it was going to waive certain yeah. immigration restrictions and allow people to come in. And many of these people have been here for decades. But under they were TPS. supposed to go and back. No, well, yes, they were. I mean, temporary is in the name. Well, temporary but they've been here. The they've been here yeah. for decades. So I what, do you, what do you do? Oh, yeah, I, temporary, is, but temporary is in the name. They were supposed to go back. Now, you certainly, if somebody's been here for decades, you speaking, of going back, hey. speaking of going back, we're going to go back to Brian oh, yeah. for the last word. Go ahead, Brian. Hi. Uh, well, you know, tomorrow is MLK Day in 
he made his big I Had a Dream speech in 1963. And <laughs> since that time till now, the population of Earth has doubled. And that's the issue. See, we never address the issue of the growth of human population on the planet. We have, an, we have another 3.5 billion people on Earth since King made that speech. And in the next 50 years, we're going to gain another 3 billion people. So we have to talk about how many people can realistically move into the United States. What's the limit? What's the proper amount? And what are we going to do about it instead of pretending like, well, you know, employers want workers, so we've got to let them in. Like you right, talk about right. the farmers. That's great. Yeah. How about the farmers pay all the social costs? How about the farmers pay the health care, the medical care, the uh, educational costs of their workers that they just have to have? See, we don't talk about that. It's always we've got to let them in for the, for the employer. Brian, well, actually, I, I think you're so, raising a global problem, yes, yes, not just a U.S. problem, because with things that, that I would say are related to climate change, with drought, floods, etc., you're going to have millions of people, you know, for whatever, and, and famine, fleeing areas like South, South America, fleeing Africa, trying to go someplace where the conditions are better. And, and we, have, we are unprepared let's on, not, as a society on how to deal with this. Brian, we got to go. Thank you for expanding our global reach. I'm Beyond the Beltway this evening, 1-800-723-8020. A reminder, after the break at uh, 7 o'clock uh, or whatever it is in your, your time zone, we've got a special guest from Arizona. If you look hard enough, go off the beaten track far enough, you'll find an America teeming with the unusual, the odd, the downright strange. I'm Will Klinger. And I'm your guide on a package tour we like to call Wild Travels. Join us on our weekly road trip to see America's most offbeat and unusual attractions. Wild Travels, available on your local PBS station, or it darn well should be. CSX moves forward. So do the rest of us. Come on back. Uh, Michael Carbonano, you were making a point during the break. Let's put it on the air. No, I was just saying, talking about, you know, uh, it was Trump's statement yesterday that, that he gave from the White House. Um, was that from a position of strength or weakness? I think it was clearly from a position of weakness. He's at 37 percent right now. He's he's scrambling so he doesn't continue to lose people. And we were saying who's really left in that 37 percent. And I think it's really the Freedom Caucus. Um, and, and they're really driving so much of the conversation. Who are the other grownups in the room? Will it be Mitch McConnell? Will it be Jared Kushner? Will it be other people that can get to him? If they can, they still have to work through the Freedom Caucus ultimately because what, what is what what is your reaction to the NPR, PBS, Marist poll of Latino voters, mm -hmm. Hispanic voters yeah. that said that Donald Trump is more popular. His his ratings are up twenty percent since December, and a lot of Hispanics like what Donald Trump is doing. Not all. But a significant number do. I haven't seen the poll or the cross tabs. Oh, yes, I'd want right. to oh, see the cross tabs. But it's NPR. It's NPR. And it's PBS. Yeah, so they're not likely. Well, but I'd want to see the cross tabs I, on any poll like that. I would speculate uh, that one of the th reasons that Donald Trump appeals to a portion of the Hispanic population is that many Hispanics are religious con Catholics, yes. and and Trump's anti-abortion stance yes. plays significantly, and and I've always thought. And that like a macho. lot of Hispanics would migrate to the Republican Party Understand over the abortion issue. There's other part. And uh, over uh, same-sex issues. Yes. Same-sex marriage. You're, you're over right. Over both of them. On top of that, uh, an extensive amount of research has been done in econ to try to decide what is the effect of immigration. And one of the most important findings over many, many years okay. is that the number one group of people hurt by new illegal immigrants are former immigrants. Yes. Yes. And those are going to be predominantly, given the numbers, they're going to yeah. be predominantly Hispanic. Yeah. And so who is getting reamed by the fact that more and more are coming in? Many Hispanics. Okay. So the idea of closing the door behind them, or at least making people come in the front door, is a perfectly reasonable Change, solution. Change in subject. 
Uh, Jeff Hom, how significant was the BuzzFeed story this week, especially when Robert Mueller <laughs> took it down and basically said that the story was bogus, was inaccurate. Which is unprecedented, by the way. The fact, the, fact that, the fact that the special counsel would say, no, this is absolutely bonkers, right? And it's just one of two stories. Well, he said not. He said I mean, I'm paraphrasing. Accurate, not, not bonkers. I'm, yeah. I'm paraphrasing this spokesman. I can't hear See him right? saying bonkers. It's, it is completely false, okay, was, was I believe, the quote, right? I got and the quote right here. BuzzFeed's description of specific statements to the special counsel's office and the characterization of documents and testimony obtained by this office regarding Michael Cohen's congressional testimony are not accurate. Yeah. Are not accurate. Okay, it's, thank you. It's what so, he said so and what he presented, and it's not equal to what BuzzFeed said. So it's said. not it's bonkers, a, and it's not that, but continue. Oh, it's know. just another example of how people in the media are trying to rush to get to the president, right? And it's it's interesting that over these hundreds of stories that have had to be corrected, like this one, they all happen to be errors in the same way. Oh, it's, right. it's I want to ask Mike, I want to ask Michael, I want to ask our favorable coverage. Right. Okay, here's my question. No other uh, journalistic organization uh, ran with that story and gave it any verification or authenticity right. at all. Correct. But they all repeated it. They all repeated it, yes. Right, saying it was what, just BuzzFeed. Okay, wow. what does it say to you as an as a observer of news and as a Democrat okay. when a story like this is repeated without any verification right. of it? Okay. So, Jeff, this is one area where you and I are going to have a great deal of commonality. Excellent. All right? Because... <laughs> Because I, I think there is a general bias against Trump and the mainstream media. And stories that are too good uh, well, to check. Well, well, and, and by the way, I, I think that's because a lot of the media folks see the situation close at hand and, and are uh, unhappy campers. Let me put it yeah, nicely. However, however, let me say this. With the BuzzFeed story, I can't tell you how many Democrats I know, including a lot of really smart lawyers, were saying, time to start impeachment proceedings based on a media report. All right, let's, let's see this through. Let's get yes. the Mueller report right. and see what Agreed. evidence is really found and whether there's evidence or not. And I will tell you my personal bias here. I hope there's no evidence that the president was in, or his campaign was in collusion with Russia, Russian I agents. Completely agree. I hope there's no evidence that the president is perhaps a Russian agent because I, I, want, I would prefer this be fought out at the polls yes. in 2020. Sure, we have such a sensible man. I mean, but Absolutely. again, this so, is, well, what, this what is I, an example. Right, I want to go, I wanna, let's go back to, go ahead. Yep. You, go this ahead. is an example of a trend where the, the press is trying to dunk on, on Donald Trump. And they end up failing spectacularly and feeding into the, the, the idea that the media is out to get him. Which, oh, that, no, this how do you this see these stories and not come to that conclusion? reinforces one of his biggest, I think, rallying points is that the media is out to get him, I or told you that. Yes. the media is out to embarrass him. And in this particular case, and they're just embarrassing they were out themselves. to embarrass him by, by repeating a story that was not valid and then was, was, was debunked. And, the, the thing and again, by the way, I, I received a number, this is, this is my you know, population of, of Facebook friends. I received at least three or four that said, we got him. We right. got him. We got him. How many right. did you get, Mike? So, so did you I, get a few? I, but this is to Mike's point, too. I think it's going to be one of two ways. Either next year the voters mm -hmm. speak and he's not in office, mm -hmm. or if Congress wants to take action. But I think it's more and more everybody's on the same page on this. Let's let Mueller finish his investigation. I wish Mitch McConnell would take action to have the Senate vote to um, – because I know the House has a bill out there to say McCon that M Mueller has to finish. I, the one thing I thought interesting about Didn't this was... Didn't Bill Barr say that over yes, and over no, but, again? But, but, over I but I want to say one thing that was really interesting, and, and as a former prosecutor, I thought it was interesting. This is when Mueller spoke up. He, d he didn't speak up to dispute any of the other media reports about his investigation. He spoke up to correct the record on this one. So it makes you wonder... Because it was is, probably is, because it was well, so what ridiculous. Say, what does it say about everything else? Oh, it doesn't say. What it does say. What, what it does say. What it does say. We must remember. We must remember. This BuzzFeed is the one that made a big mistake with this report. BuzzFeed is the only the one from the dossier that released the dossier. Yep. None of the mainstream media repeated. They they all did what they did just in the last 48 hours. They all repeated the bad news. Right. But nobody would put their name to it because it was bogus. It didn't happen. There's no evidence that it happened. And, and, yet, and yet it led to the investigation that's dominated uh, politics for the last uh, you know, year and a half. By the way, 
Mark your calendar. Two years from tonight, are we going to be inaugurating a new president or are we going to be re-inaugurating Donald Trump? And if we re-inaugurate, if we are re-inaugurating, inaugurating Donald Trump, how depressed are you liberals are going to be? <laughs> Brutally. <laughs> Back shortly. <laughs> Welcome to the world, 2116. You can fly across town in minutes, or across the globe in under an hour. Whole communities are living on Mars, and solar satellites provide Earth with unlimited clean power. In less than a century, Boeing took the world from seaplanes to space planes, across the universe and beyond. And if you thought that was amazing, you just wait. Today, fresh fruits and vegetables will go from a field in California to a grocer in Miami. A bottle of beer from Eagle Pass will journey to a restaurant in Manhattan. A two by four in Oregon will find its way to a townhome in Denver. A hybrid will say goodbye to Detroit and hello to a showroom in Austin. while a steel beam will leave a mill in Illinois for a high-rise in Phoenix. And a flat screen in China will head to an electronic store in Memphis. Because today, as every day, wherever you find business, you'll find us. From Chicago, it's Saturday Night Live, the experience. For the first time ever, get an inside look at the making of SNL. Over 500 artifacts direct from the show. Be a part of Wayne's World, Weekend Update, and so much more. Experience all it takes to put the show together. Now at the Museum of Broadcast Communications at 360 North State Street in Chicago. For tickets, visit museum.tv.